But if I can ask Karen, who uh, has got a project sponsored by Arts Council, uh, to delve into the opportunity to authenticate actors, which is, I've got a hectic second note, set of notes, but I'm hopefully going to share with you um, during this little session. So here we go. So, hi, I'm Karen, and at the end of, or the mid August 2021, I received notification from the Arts Council saying that they'd agreed to my develop your creative practice, which was this crazy project to look at theatre and audiences across digital, physical and virtual audience strategies. So being part of the things that I've done with Cyber Salon, this authentication um, and the NFT part of this arena brought me back to Back to the Future. Who has seen Back to the Future? All films. All films. You've seen all films. You have. You have. Now, Crispin Glover played the father of Martin McFly. However, Crispin Glover, the actor, only played the father of Martin McFly in film number one. At the end of the film, he didn't like where the series was going, and he refused to sign a contract with it. Films two through five do not star Crispin Glover. They use a face cast that was done for the previous makeup and created prosthetics to make an actor look like Crispin Glover. And he sued the film company for the use of his likeness without his permission. Even then, the notion of deep fakes, this was back in 1986, court case was 1990. Even back then, the notion of actors being able to protect their identity on film was an issue. So although we're now entering deep fake through altered technology, how do you know? And for actors, it's really key that if they're on film, how do you know if you're going to be used again in the future? If your body is scanned, how do you take ownership of that? And I think sort of whether whether technology is used for promotional purposes or whether it's used for authentication with the arts. I'm going to return to my notes because I'm getting on track. So, so I have a one year development of my creative practice granted by the Arts Council. My vision is to produce a small theatre production that blends physical space with virtual reality, with extended reality and the design of the stage to create new work that goes to audiences that wouldn't normally see that type of theatre. As part of that offer, I was interested in NFTs as well. Can we use NFTs as an, part of the investment portfolio of a theatre company that as part of the media that you create, the media becomes minted on a blockchain that can then be offered as a perk to an investor but also to the cast, the, the creators, that in years to come, when people bump into them and go, weren't you in that little show that toured the UK? And the act, main actor, God, didn't he become big? It wasn't he just in that Hollywood movie? And they go, yeah, yeah, he was. I never really went on to continue acting. And they go, do you have an NFT? And they go, yeah, you know, they're still a thing, they're still a thing. And they'll go, oh yeah, I'd like to do that. They go home way that they have the NFT, they can put it for sale and all of a sudden a piece of live theatre becomes something that you can authenticate and that you can actually um, commoditize. So part of what I'm trying to solve with my investigation of NFTs is a validation of a CV, a validation of a creator's CV. Um, so an equity and reward as well. I like to have, I would like to have a link to my NFT portfolio of these things that can be verified by IMDB through a hash that they can go and have a look at a blockchain and say, oh, actually, you were in that show that you say that you were in, in the National Theatre or in um, the Crucible. In my case, I just got paper programs that say I was in it. There's nothing on my CV to say that I really was in any of the things that I claim that I was in. And then we go back to Guardian journalists who on their CV say, I wrote for the Guardian and actually they didn't. They just commented on a post many years ago and then claimed that they were a journalist. 
So film and TV talent have benefited from syndicated residuals. And there's a mechanic I think in there to provide theatre talent with a similar reward system. And that's what I'm investigating really over this sort of 12 months. So these thoughts and these provocations are leading me on a journey to bring my role of looking at NFTs together with exploring through my theatre work, the suspension of disbelief and the suspension of reality. And can you use live theatre and a lot of the modern motion capture to extend through projection and VR stages to show an audience something that halfway through they might go, hold on a minute, the back wall of that stage isn't that far away. And if you can warp the reality of somebody sat in a physical space and everyone around them, how can the conversation with them then be turned to, well, what have you been looking at online that's real? How do you know that something and the Mandalorian was filled in the desert? A lot of the Mandalorian is not filmed in location. It's now filmed on sound, virtual sound stages, and they are amazing to look at, um, but they are all not filmed on location. So this whole notion of I can't believe what I'm hearing or seeing is believing, it's really not going to be like that anymore. And then the uncanny valley, we've all had that, what's the uncanny valley? And we've spent years looking at things on screen and going, well, that doesn't look quite real. And until now, the human eye knew when something wasn't right. And that uncanny valley has been something that media has tried to move over. But now, unfortunately, we're moving into canny valley. And with Web 2, Web, Web 3, there comes this canny valley. I recently heard about an experiment um, that showed faces to a panel of people who were real and people who were AI generated that had pleasing faces that you might want to engage with. And um, the panel not only failed to distinguish between the real and the AI generated faces, but they actually showed preference for the AI generated naive <laughs> faces. So deep fake is definitely something that we all know is here. And we, we're the wizards, we're the engineers and the architects and the artists. And, and we're the ones that are making and building and constructing all of these things. Anyone can imagine things, but the manifestation of those ideas takes particular skill. And that's why we are the wizards. I heard someone refer to um, Zephyrin, who is here doing the tech, about how he's a wizard. And I think we've all, in our time, people go, how do you do that? You have a way of using it, and people would like to. So tonight, I'm here to be truly who I am an internet adventure and explorer. I'm crypto curious and Cyber Salon back in 2014 brought me literally to the reason why I'm stood here today. In 2007, I met a group of social media pioneers and to them at the time, social media was a dirty word, but for a better term, that's what we've ended up with. And even then, they were saying, how do you leverage this for my business? What's in it for me? Why would anybody ever do social media? Why would someone want to tweet? R-O-I. How did I leverage social media? And we've got, right now, we've got Facebook and Twitter. And these are all those web two things that have survived. I mean, here's a little list for you of, of things. If you're a bit nostalgic, and these techies tend to be, what happened to Poster and Beam and Seedmic and Bamuser and Bebo and MySpace? They were all great champions of their time, and especially with Beam, we've even lost features that were really useful. I can't, I used to like putting my phone to my chest and being able to film what I was filming. Beam was fantastic. But say, that was the dawn of Web 2. But it was commerce, and the only way people could make money out of it, ultimately, was not the artist. It was the commoditization of our media, and that's been the bane of Web 2. It's almost like the gentrification of streets, that gentrification tends to be kick-started by the artists and the creatives that make the place somewhere that people want to be. And then ultimately they get moved out of the area and everybody else comes in. And I'm hoping that Web3 might be something a little bit different. So although I'm a theatre maker and a tech warrior, um, what people said about 2.0 there's a similar generation that are echoing the bemusement with Web3. And, and why am I interested in Web3? Well, just as I've come to a close here, uh, blockchain, NFT, decentralization, 
digitization of proof with proof modeling, consensus, and interrogating the truth, conflict resolution, and taking control of my data. You know, we, the only problem at the moment with a lot of the things that someone as a tech adventurer is how you interact with crypto. And that's what I'm wanting to learn from a lot of people here. So if you've got any projects that you want to share or find out how audiences can engage with them, please do talk to me. Because it is about legacy, authentication, provenance, immutability, and interop interoperability. I said the word. Um, but it's an evolution of the services. And that's my journey. You know, I had my first wallet when I had to move my cryptocurrency into a wallet. I've recently got to the point where I've got to move from a wallet into purchasing NFT. And that journey is not quite as easy as people think. But art and blockchain are all the rage right now. And just as social was a new application of technology to bigger, better, and stronger, it gave a wider existence to purely what was already around in the analog world. And so I came back to Arthur C. Clarke's An Exploration of Magic. And I'm sure you've all heard this and you all quoted it. Any, any sufficiently advanced technology is distinguishable from magic. And there's some of the things that are going on at the moment with crypto and deep fake and how we interpret what we're seeing that is quite magical to a lot of the world. And how is it that we help people navigate that? So that's what I'm wanting to do with my art. And I thank you all so much for entertaining my little journey. And I, I hope I'll come back and tell you where it gets to.